ladies and gentlemen, you've heard all the evidence. I submit that this was not a hot-blooded crime of passion. Consider this, a revolver holds six bullets, not eight. That means that he fired the gun empty and then stopped to reload. By the power vested in me by the state of Maine, I hereby order you to serve two life sentences back to back. One for each of your victims. So be it. They send you here for life. That's exactly what they take. I believe in two things. Discipline. Help me, God! And the Bible. Here you receive both. Andy came to Shawshank Prison in 1947. Why'd you do it? I didn't, since you ask. <laughs> you can fit right in. I must admit, I didn't think much of Andy the first time I laid eyes on him. He had a quiet way about him. A walk and a talk that just wasn't normal around here. There are places in the world that aren't made out of stone. There's something inside they can't touch. What are you talking about? Hope. Let me tell you something, my friend. Hope is a dangerous thing. Damn it, Dufresne, you're putting me behind. Hope can drive a man insane. You better be sick or dead in there, I kid you not. I better get used to that idea. Oh, my holy God. I guess it comes down to a simple choice, Billy. Really. Get you're busy living, you get busy dying. Get busy living, or get busy dying. That's damn right. If you like, Mr. Stevens, I could bring in some more cuttings for you. Thank you, Miss Kendall. But I regard this room as my private place of work, and I, I prefer to keep distractions to a minimum. Would you call flowers a distraction, then, Mr. Stevens? I appreciate your kindness, Miss Kenton, but uh, I prefer to keep things as they are. Oh, and since you are here, uh, there is a matter I wanted to mention to you, just a small matter. I happened to be uh, walking past the kitchen yesterday morning, and I heard you calling to someone named William. May I ask who it was you were addressing by that name? Why, Mr. Stevens, I should think I was addressing your father. Oh. There are no other Williams in this house, I take it? True. May I ask you in future, Mrs. Kenton, to address my father as Mr. Stevens? Or if you are speaking of him to a third party, you may wish to call him Mr. Stevens Senior to distinguish him from myself. So I would be most grateful to you, Miss Kenton. I don't quite... Hmm? Understand what you're getting at, Mr. Stevens. I am the housekeeper in this house, and your father 
It is the under butler. In other houses, I was accustomed to address the under servants by their Christian names. Hmm. Miss Kenton, if you would stop to think for a moment, you would realize that how inappropriate it is for one such as yourself to address as William, someone such as my father. Well, I'm sure, Mr. Stevens, it must have been very galling for your father to be called William by one such as myself. Miss Kenton, all I'm saying is that my father is a person from whom, if you wish to be more observant, you may learn many things. I'm most grateful for your advice, Mr. Stevens, but do please tell me just what marvelous things might I learn from your father. I might point out that you are still often unsure of what goes where and which item is which. I'm sure Mr. Stevens Sr. is very good at his job. But I can assure you, Mr. Stevens, that I'm very good at mine. Oh, of course. Thank you. And uh, now, if you will, please excuse me. Miss Kenton? 